Hello everyone, welcome to Stealing with Chantel. I'm Chantel, and this is Ty. Hello, welcome to the Magic of Airplane Flight, presented by the Aviation Museum of Kentucky. So let's learn about the magic of flight. We've all seen airplanes flying through the air. Have you ever wondered how airplanes fly? How do they defy the law of gravity? Some airplanes weigh thousands of pounds and can carry over 800 passengers through the air at over 600 miles per hour. So let's learn about this magic. As we sit or stand in place or walk or run, there's a force acting on our bodies. The force of our weight created by gravity keeps us on the earth. Weight keeps both us and parts airplanes from sailing off into space. In addition to the force of the airplane's weight, there are other forces that can act on an airplane during flight. The other forces on a flying airplane are lift, thrust, and drag. All four forces are invisible but present when an airplane is flying. Lift produced by the wings works opposite weight. When the lift is greater than the weight, the airplane leaves the earth and flies into the air. Thrust produced by an engine works opposite drag. When the thrust is greater than the drag, the airplane moves forward through the air. So how does a wing produce lift? First, the wing, it must have a special shape and be mounted on the airplane in a particular way. Also, the wing must be moving through the air to produce lift. The arrow pointing up on the slide represents the force of lift pulling the airplane up, working against its weight. This diagram shows the typical shape of an airplane wing in cross section, the front facing the left. As the wing moves through the air to the left, the air flowing over the top of the wing moves faster as it travels a slightly longer distance. The air moving across the bottom of the wing moves more slowly. In 1738, a scientist named Bernoulli established a principle. His principle states that faster moving air has lower air pressure and slower moving air has higher air pressure. So the higher air pressure pushing on the bottom of the wing causes lift. You can demonstrate Bernoulli's principle yourself. Cut a strip of paper about three inches wide by 10 inches long. Hold the narrow end of a strip on your lower lip. The other end will droop down. Now blow over the top of the paper while still holding on your lip. The strip of paper will go up. Air moving across the top of the paper allows the higher pressure on the bottom to lift it up. That is an example of lift. So the wing of an airplane moving through the air produces lift. The amount of lift produced by a wing moving through the air depends on the shape of the wing, how the wing is attached to the airplane, and the speed of the airplane. Generally, the higher the speed, the greater the lift. So how does the airplane move through the air? The airplane's engine produces another invisible force called thrust that moves the airplane along the ground and through the air. The arrow on the slide represents thrust moving this airplane forward against the force of drag. Drag is caused by air friction working against the airplane parts. There are two types of engines typically used to produce thrust on airplanes today. One type is the jet engine and the other is a piston engine turning a propeller. So for an airplane to move forward through the air, the engines must produce thrust that is stronger than the drag of air friction. Now airplanes are used for many different purposes. Every day around the world, millions of people fly on passenger airplanes. This huge airplane, the Airbus 380, can fly up to 850 people over 650 miles an hour over 40,000 feet above the earth. Singapore Airlines nonstop flight from Singapore to Newark, New Jersey is currently the longest flight in the world, lasting around 18 hours and 30 minutes and traveling 9,534 miles without landing to refuel. There is some magic in that. This amazing airplane first flew just over 100 years after the Wright brothers made history by flying the first powered heavier than air aircraft in a controlled flight. That first flight lasted 12 seconds and the Wright flyer flew a distance of 120 feet. Firefighting airplanes are especially designed to carry large amounts of water and flame retardant and then release their load over forest fires. Many of these airplanes are able to fill their water tanks without landing by scooping it up as the airplane flies over the surface. Hurricane hunters are very strong airplanes that fly into hurricanes to help weather forecasters predict where the hurricane is headed and how strong it will be. 
Some airplanes carry cargo in their bodies. The cargo may be bananas, boats, balloons, or bicycles. The cargo in this airplane is a huge truck. The nose of the airplane swings up so that the truck can be driven in and out. The nose swings back before flight. Many airplanes are in service defending our country. Some are fighters like this F-16 called the Fighting Falcon. Some airplane owners paint their airplanes in special ways. This passenger airplane has a great paint job. Can you see Minnie on the nose, Mickey on the tail, and Donald and Goofy on the body? We appreciate that you have spent time with us today learning about lift, thrust, weight, and drag as these forces on airplanes create the magic of flight. Tune in next week for part two, Forces of Flight. Using airplanes to emphasize what you have learned so far. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more STEM with Chantel videos, check out this playlist. If you want to know when JCPL puts out more content, click the subscribe button and the notification bell.